your test bee review. I'm going to be doing it on video since I'm not there to do it with you. So we're going to go over this and then you can watch it as many times as you want as it helps you study for your test. You're going to want to use this with your form or with your practice test aid that you're going to get assigned today. So uh, you'll notice that in Schoology, I have coordinated some of the questions to from your practice test to where you would find it here. All right, so your test is tomorrow, Friday. And I am filming right now, so obviously I'm going to have disruptions. Um, so I am filming at home. So you might see a pop-up, like you just heard an email come in. So we're going to do our best to ignore those. All right, so you have to find the absolute value. Remember, absolute value means distance from zero. So that value is always going to be positive unless there is a negative in front of the brackets, which we don't see any here. So the absolute value, and there's the symbol for absolute value, the absolute value of negative 15 is a positive 15. That just means that it's 15 spaces away from zero. It doesn't matter if it's behind or ahead of it. Over here, the absolute value of negative 1 and 1 third is 1 and 1 third. You're going to be doing a lot of adding and subtracting on this test. It's pretty much what the most of the test is. So when you are adding up fractions, remember uh, adding up any integers actually, your addition rules come into play. If you have the same sign, whether they're both positive or both negative, you're going to simply add them and then steal the sign. If there are different signs, meaning one's negative and one's positive, you're going to find the difference basically by subtracting them and then stealing the sign of the one that there's more of. For example, let's look at the addition problems first. I highly recommend isolating your integers, leaving the operation sign alone in the middle. I have two negative integers, so I'm actually going to add these together. So 23 plus 8 is 31, and I'm going to steal the negative sign. On this problem, you have two negatives, so I'm actually going to add these fractions up. However, I need a common denominator. So therefore, I am going to make sure that I convert this to a common denominator of 4. So 2 times 2 is 4, 5 times 2 is 10, and then I'm going to add them up. So I get 17 fourths, and because they're both negative, I'm going to steal the sign. Now, I should have converted this back to a mixed number, and you will have to on your test too. I did it down here. I didn't do it here for some reason. So 4 goes into 17 four full times with one left over. So the actual correct answer should be negative 4 and 1 fourth. So try not to, I'm going to tell you right now, don't leave them improper on your test tomorrow. Down here, we have, actually let's go over here because it's another addition problem. Now we're doing with decimals. So we have different signs here. So that means we're actually going to subtract the difference. So we're going to put the 9.13 on top, and we're going to subtract away the 1.4. Remember, you need a zero placeholder. Once I do my subtraction, I'm going to steal the negative sign because I have more negatives than I do positive. We had a little bit of borrowing here where we crossed off the 9, made it 8. This should be 11. So we got a negative 7.73. Remember, we're lining up decimal points, and we want zero placeholders. Now, as far as the subtraction rules, notice I highlighted the subtraction signs because I wanted to make sure I reminded myself about the keep change change rule. And on your test tomorrow, these are going to be all mixed up too. So you're going to want to remember that subtraction rules, you're basically just going to do the first step of keep change change, meaning you're going to keep the first integer, change the operation to, uh, from subtraction to addition, and then change the sign of the second integer, and then follow the addition rules. So for this one, we have negative 14. We're going to change it to keep, change, change. So keep negative 14. We're going to make this subtraction plus, and the negative 7 becomes 7. Because they're different signs, we're going to find the difference, which was 7. And it's negative 7 because we have more negatives than positive. Down here, we need to keep the first, change to addition, change this to a positive 7 fifths. Since we have the same denominators, we can go on. And since they're different signs, we're going to find the difference between the two. So the difference between 7 fifths and 1 fifths is 6 fifths. It is positive because there's more positives than negatives. And we're going to convert it back by putting 5 into 6 once with 1 left over and bring over the 5 for 1 and 1 fifth. And then decimals, same thing, keep, 
change to addition, change from negative 9.9 .9 to positive 9.9. .9. We have two positives now. We're going to follow the addition rule, so we're going to stack them, line up our decimal points, add 6, carry the 1. We have 13. There's a decimal right there. I, it's kind of hidden, but it's there. 13.67. So again, on your test tomorrow, when these are all mixed up, I would just remind yourself of the subtraction problems. Now, finding the distance between two numbers on a number line. This, don't let this confuse you, because once again, we're talking about distance. And anytime we're talking about distance, we're going to have a positive answer. So think of this as we have a negative 2 and 1 fifth, and we have a positive 3 fifths, which means that we're going to be behind the 0. So we need to go 2 and 1 fifth all the way up to the 0. And we're going to add to it another 3 fifths. So since we're on opposite sides of the 0 and we have different signs, we're actually going to add these together for our total distance between the two. You can think of this as when we did coordinate planes and we were going from one quadrant into the other. So. In order to get to negative 2 and 1 fifth to 0, that's 2 and 1 fifths away. And then we're going to add another 3 fifths because we're going past the 0 for a total of 2 and 4 fifths. Now, we have two negatives over here, which means that there's like a 0 here. And we're only staying to the left of it. Since we're not crossing over the 0, when we have the same signs and we're finding distance, we're just going to subtract their absolute values. So we're just going to subtract the 7.2 and the 1.5 for a distance of 5.7. So be careful. When you see the word distance on your test, it means you're just trying to find out how far apart they are. If you're crossing over the zero like we are here, we're going to add up the total distance. We're only on one side of the zero here, so we're going to add them. Uh, we're going to actually subtract the two of them together. But our answers are always going to be positive. Think of these as the problem of the diver who was diving down and hit the water and then went a little bit under the water. We would add that total distance. Or if we have a shark under the water and the shark's going to come up but not quite hit the surface, surface we're just going to subtract the distance. You're going to have a problem, something like this, where we have um, transactions. For example, a banking transaction. And it says that we have uh, two deposits and two withdrawals. Remember, deposits are positive. That's putting money in. Withdrawals are negative. We're taking money out. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what the total deposit or withdrawal is. And then it says your account starts with 95 bucks. This comes into play at the end. So what I would recommend doing is take both your positives, both your deposits, and add them up. For total deposit of 55 and then I would actually take your two withdrawals because they have the same sign I would also add those together to get a total withdrawal of negative 80 bucks and we're going to combine them together so we had more withdrawals than we had um, deposits so we would subtract these two because they have different signs so we actually have a total of negative 25 dollars because we withdrew more money than we than we put in since our original total was $95, our original balance, we have to subtract this $25 for a new balance of $70. So we still have money in our account, but overall we had more withdrawals than deposits. So thankfully we still have money left in the account. All right. We are not going to do anything like number 12 where we have three things going on. This problem says there are 13 cups of milk in a container. You drink 0.75 cups of the milk every morning and 2.5 cups every evening. So when will you run out of milk? Well, let's find out how much you drink per day. Since you drink 0.75 in the morning and 2.5 during the day, drinking means you're actually consuming it, we are taking and we're consuming a total of 3.25 cups of milk per day. So out of our original 13 cups, Every day we're drinking or consuming or taking away 3.25 cups. So what I did was I started over here and I said, okay, day one, we drank 3.25. Day two, we drank another 3.25 for a total of 6.5. Day three, we drank another 3.25 for 
19.75. Day four, we drank another 3.25 and we hit 13. So it took us four days. You also could do this the opposite way where you could start at 13 on the top and keep subtracting 3.25 away and you would get the same answer. It takes four days to do that. Number 14 says an airplane begins its descent. Descent means it's going down at 1.5 miles or one and a half miles above the ground. So your plane is one and a half miles above the ground and it's beginning to go down now. After 15 minutes, the airplane is now three-fourths of a mile above the ground. So find the change in the height of the airplane. And then if the airplane continues to descend at this rate, how long does the entire descent last? Well, the airplane, if it's 1.5 miles above the ground, and after 15 minutes, it goes down um, three quarters of a mile. I changed these to decimals. It was just easier. So at 1.5, we went 0.75 down. We are now at a 0.75 after 15 minutes. Another 15 minutes goes by and we descend another 0.75. So our total descent, of course, was negative 1.5 miles because we're going from 1.5 miles to the ground. And it happens in 30 minutes. So it kind of looks like this problem as we're just starting again at 1.5 miles above the ground. 15 minutes we go 0.75 down, which leaves us at 0.75. And another 15 minutes later, at the same rate, we finally are on the ground. So the airplane continues to uh, descend 1.5 miles over 30 minutes. That's going to be all the, the basic questions on your test. On your practice test today, guys, again, I matched up. So on your practice test, what's put into Schoology is it'll say maybe um, study guide two. If you have a question, you can find them in here. But the main part of the test is make sure you understand these addition and subtraction rules. You will not be able to use a calculator on tomorrow's test. So you need to be ready to do the addition and subtraction without calculators. Feel free to watch this video over and over again if you need to, if you have a question how to do something. Otherwise, you're going to do your practice test. You're going to complete it in Big Ideas. You're going to find and highlight all of your corrections. And please remember that your score that you think you have may not match up with what Big Ideas says because I have to go in and do the final grading. So don't panic if your grade's a little off. Just make sure you make all of your corrections. Hold on to your practice test tonight to study from and turn it in tomorrow morning, the day you take the test. I will be looking online on the computer in the morning to make sure you've completed it online. All right, good luck studying, and I'm sure you're going to do great. You guys will probably be working on the practice test next.